Brian Bledsoe, who runs a couple of painting groups on Facebook, had contacted me a while before Adepticon and asked if I would paint one of his dwarf slayers for his collection. He was having the whole community pick a dwarf and paint that for this uh, unit. And I didn't know if I was going to be able to get it finished in time or not before I left for the show, but here's how I did it. Brian sent me this little package that had his dwarf ready to go. And it looks like that it was primered black with kind of a dry brush zenithal on it. And he specifically mentioned not to finish the base because when he wound up getting the, the, the painting from the other participants in the group that he was going to base all of the models the same so that the unit would look cohesive even though each dwarf was individually painted by different people. I started off with uh, selecting my colors. I wanted to go with ivory, uh, a tan color. Uh, I needed a little burnt sienna and I was gonna use some dark umber to kind of create the base flesh tones. And then of course, I wanted to add a little bit of dark purple in there in order to create some shadows. All of my painting is done with a Series 7 Winsor Newton uh, number two brush. Uh, it's kind of a, it's got a heavier body on the bristles to it, and I like the way that they come to a really fine point. So I should be able to use this as my general purpose brush in order to do pretty much all the base coating and even some of the details. Since he's mostly naked and has a lot of skin, I decided that I wanted to start with just the basic flesh color to lay down a base coat, and then I would go and work out my shading and highlights from there. So the first task was just to cover up all the skin uh, with this basic flesh color. After base coating everything with this tan flesh color, uh, then I moved on to doing uh, kind of an overall wash in order to create some smooth shadows in all of the creases. I used a mix of dark purple and flesh wash for this. Basically, I just put a little puddle of the flesh wash on my palette and added small amounts using the tip of my brush and mixing it in until it got dark enough that it was suitable for the shadows. Then it was just a matter of slathering that all over the skin areas to create deepened shadows. I went back to the, the base tan flesh color and added just a tiny amount of that mix of the purple wash that I had for the shade in order to kind of darken it down a little bit. And then I went back over just all of the highlights, just the high spots of all of the musculature in order to highlight that and sort of bring out that tan flesh color again. Then it was just a matter of working my way across the different areas of the model and making sure that all of the areas were highlighted up to the level that I wanted. What I wanted to do was to take that base color and lighten it up just a little bit. So I added just a touch of ivory to that mix and then continued from there. Now, by this time, you'll probably notice that I'm not using a wet palette for any of these colors. My dry palette in this instance is just basically a container lid. Uh, I think it's sour cream or something. I don't, I don't know. It's a plastic lid of some kind, and it was just the right size for me to mix all of the colors on this. I've seen a couple of videos where Jason's talking about developing the Pro Acryl series of paints, and he mainly paints with a dry palette also. Um, pretty much like the way that I started out painting. 
So when I came across the Monument Hobbies paints, they really fit with the type of painting that I was used to doing. So uh, even though they work great on a wet palette, I've used them on a wet palette and I will continue to use a wet palette. In this instance, I just decided that it was easier to move ahead and just put it all on a plastic lid and get her done. So at this point, I just continued to work my way across the model, just hitting just the high spots of all of the different parts of the anatomy. After wrapping up all those highlights, I wanted to go back and sort of tie everything together from the deepest shadow to the highest highlight. To do that, I took a little bit of this glaze and wash medium, and then I added some of that flesh wash and purple mix that I had, and then went back over it and did like another wash, sort of a glaze. After doing this overall glaze wash coverage thing, I took a little bit of the mahogany color and I added that to that second glaze wash thing, which kind of deepened it a little bit and added a little bit of the purpley mahogany color to it. And this also has some really nice red tones, which creates a cool flesh color. It gives it a little bit of life to it. Uh, the neat thing about doing all of these transparent glazes or washes or whatever over the surface of the skin is that it creates transparent layers of depth so that actually the light will penetrate through the transparent layers and bounce around and then come back and it, it creates a little bit of more life to the flesh color rather than just paint it all as one opaque layer. The same is true for doing leather bits too, where you can do a series of washes or glazes like that in order to create depth in like um, tanned or, or uh, lacquered leather uh, bits like boots and straps and whatnot. After I finished all of the skin tones, I used a dark umber to block out all of the base colors for a lot of the rest of the model, which kind of creates a cohesive look to the color scheme. I took this color and I base coated all of the little leather straps and pouches and whatnot that he was wearing, whatever little there was. And pretty much anything that was like wood, I base coated the, um, the hafts of the axes with the same color. And I even base coated his mohawk and beard and big uh, braid that he has um, to, uh, to give that you know kind of a deep color. Now, I wanted to work up the uh, orange color over the hair, and so this would provide kind of a really nice transition because I went back and I shaded all of these brown areas with a mix of the flesh wash and purple with just a little bit more purple in it in order to kind of deepen that and create shadows there. And I tried to keep that off of the skin colors and just run that along the edges of the pouches and straps. At this point, I was ready to highlight the areas where the hair and the beard were. So I used a combination of uh, this sort of burnt orange color with some highlight colors to create some contrast. I basically did just a first pass with the burnt orange on most of the areas, including his little armpit. And then I tried just to hit the highest edges of where the, the ridges of the beard were. I took a little bit of that yellow color and added that to the burnt orange in order to lighten it up another shade and then 
created more highlights. Now I didn't go over all of the areas that I had previously painted with the burnt orange. I just stayed to the edges and just the tips and so forth, just at the highest points of the curvature of the beard and everything, just to add sort of a little shine to where the light would hit that, that surface. And then I used this same color to go back and highlight the pouches and some of the straps and other equipment that he has. Now, while this creates a really stark highlight on the leather bits, when I was talking about glazing earlier, I went back and I took a brown wash and washed all of those areas in order to tie those two contrasts together in sort of a quick way. And it also made it look a little bit different from the hair and the beard. Then I added just a little bit of ivory to what looks like some kind of an animal skull hanging off of his necklace. Since I mainly paint models for tabletop gaming, I don't really paint a lot of non-metallic metal. So in this instance, I wanted to use true metallic metals and actually paint the axe heads with a metallic color. So in order to do that, I picked out uh, dark silver and silver to highlight that up. The first thing I did was stipple the dark silver over all of the axe heads. In order to highlight that, I took the regular silver and stippled that over the highest areas. I didn't spend a lot of time on his eyes, but I did add just a little bit of dark umber into that area to create sort of a eyelid and a pupil. Then to touch up just a couple of other things, I added some gold to some of the other details on there in order to make them pop out a little bit more from just the regular silver metal. And with that, I was going to call it done, or done enough. So at this point, uh, I was ready to hand this model off to Brian and let him finish up the base so that that would tie the whole unit together cohesively. And if you would like to see this community project and check out what they were doing as far as uh, having all the different uh, dwarves in the unit painted by the different painters, then uh, hop on over to check out the Slayer Legacy of Doom Facebook group and I've got the link down below in the description area so that you can just click on that and go and check out all of the other cool paint jobs of, from the community that we're working on this Slayer unit. If you like what we're doing here on the Bombshell channel and you want to support us, you can start off by clicking that like and that subscribe button and so forth down here on the screen where you click stuff. Or you could hop on over to our Patreon and drop off a little support over there. We would certainly appreciate it. And that goes a long way to helping to support the channel and helping us make more videos like this. So that's it for this video. And I'm Patrick with Bombshell Miniatures. And I will see you next time on the workbench.